order. Our organizational, our annual organizational meeting. I want to let uh, members of the public know who are here um, for what seems like a public address that we do have to have an organizational meeting because we've just elected a new school committee prior to our committee being able to take any action. And so I can't tell you how long that will take, but it will be a relatively brief meeting. Um, you know, 20 minutes, half hour, maybe, uh, but surely an hour or less. And we apologize for any um, inconvenience that that may cause you. Before we begin, I want to um, take this opportunity to welcome um, a few new members. Um, first of all, Stacy Jackson from Holden. Does everybody know Stacy there? And Michael Pantos from Rutland, our new member. And Rob Pelzarski from Paxton as well, our new member. Also, I want to congratulate our re-elected members, uh, Bob Carter and Margaret Watson from Holden, as well as, as, well as uh, Sherry Conrad and Norman Plourd from Sterling. Um, before we get into our agenda, I, I do want to just uh, take, take a few moments uh, and um, to, to, to acknowledge uh, some of our guests this evening. Uh, we have in attendance this evening uh, Chief Sherrill from the Holden Police Department, as well as Dave Armstrong from Holden Police. They're accompanying um, Anthony Gribbins from Holden PD, uh, Jonathan Santamore, as well as Albert Bourget. Um, it's no secret that the school district um, had a very difficult incident occur at Sunnyside Avenue, a very, a very um, hopefully we believe uh, now and forever an out of character fight that occurred off our campus. Uh, I think the school committee uh, did a great job um, as, as we worked through this issue administratively uh, in order to deal with, um, with, with, with the disciplinary issues before us. But none of that really would have been possible and, and it wouldn't have been possible for the community to move past this event had it not been for the great detective work and the great leg work and legal work done by the Holden PD um, and, and especially Anthony Gribbins, Jonathan Santamore, and, and Al Bourget. And I just want to take a moment to allow Chief Sherrill just a couple of minutes to make some comments about, about his police force and the work they did relative to that event. Good evening. Uh, Chief Sherrill from the Holden Police Department. As you all know, on April 14th, there was an, uh, a fight um, just outside the Wachusett uh, Regional High School boundaries. and. Um, the three officers uh, that Tom mentioned responded and within 48 hours through their investigation um, had located and apprehended um, all four of the, the subjects involved in the fight. It was a very uh, trying time for the police department, for the school, for the district um, due to the nature and the severity of the assault. But um, Tom and I have worked together as Dave Armstrong and several of the officers have over the years and we were all on the same page together which is so important. We were communicating. Um, between ourselves, um, between uh, staff members, administration, we were all on the same page. And those years of our partnership um, really paid off uh, in this event. Um, I can't say enough about the three officers involved. Um, they took the investigation, ran with it, uh, contacted uh, <coughs> people from the Worcester Police Department, helped make identifications. And um, as you know, those are all pending in court now. But. Um, it was a very complete, <coughs> thorough investigation, I think, based upon our partnership with the, the school district, which is so, so important in our community. Thank you, Chief Cheryl. Um, at this time, uh, we, we invited these officers here to make a public commendation of their work, and at this time, I'd like to entertain a motion to that effect. Um, I'd like to move that we commend Albert Bourget, Jonathan Santamore, and Anthony Gribbins, three members of the Holden Police Department, for the outstanding in order to investigate and to bring to justice those individuals involved in the fight that took place on Sunnyside Avenue on April 14, 2008. Their prompt and thorough investigation was an important step for the Wachusett community to take in bringing closure to this unfortunate incident. The Wachusett Regional School District School Committee thanks and commends these officers for their efforts on behalf of our community. Seeing none, let's vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think it's unanimous. Great job, guys. Okay, now we'll move to, do we have ballots? 
Now we'll move to our order of um, business in the organizational meeting. First, um, you, my, 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 my first and only duties this evening is to get you a new chair. I'll lead you through that process. Um, for those of you who haven't been on the committee or for those of you who don't remember, um, we'll take nominations. We'll um, spend a period of time discussing those nominations, allowing people to make uh, as many statements as they'd like about either their own candidacy or the candidacy uh, of someone who's been nominated. Um, all votes are taken in um, for chair are taken by paper ballot. So I'll distribute paper ballots. Uh, each paper ballot is individualized by member and must be signed by member and will be included. Your signed vote will be included as, as part of the public record. So it's very important. We've had some minor minor blips on the radar screen uh, relative to this one as, as people uh, didn't sign their votes and, 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 and we, we, we lost the ability to count those votes. So you know that, that's basically the procedure. And at this time, I'd like to call for nominations from the floor for any member to be nominated as our next chair. All right. Ms. Bessonet. Thank you, Dr. Pandicio. Margaret Watson has been an exemplary leader for the school committee during the past two years. Her grasp of the underlying issues that affect the committee's business, <coughs> her control over the meeting process itself, and her sensible intuition in recommending and facilitating committee action have resulted in an immeasurable improvement in this committee's efficiency and effectiveness. Additionally, Ms. Watson brings to her role a lifelong commitment to public education and a deep understanding of the complexities inherent not only in achieving the district's stated goals, but also in developing policies that provide a meaningful foundation for these goals. As if that weren't enough, Ms. Watson has cultivated through an extraordinary commitment of her personal time productive and respectful working relationship with both the district administration and the elected leadership of our member towns. She is unfailingly professional and responsive <coughs> to local officials and community members alike, displaying the thoughtful and deliberative demeanor of a dedicated public servant who values civil discourse. All these qualities together with a rather eclectic millinery sense combine to make Margaret Watson an outstanding choice to lead this committee for another year. With pleasure, I nominate Margaret Watson for chair of the Wachusett Regional School District Committee. Second. Other nominations? No, I, I was, I, that was very eloquent. I was just going to say she does a darn good job. <laughs> I move the nominations be closed. I'll second. Moved by Duncan Leith and seconded by Melinda Coyle that nominations be closed. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? There might the be chair. some people here who don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here is a brief statement of my priorities. First, to assist the school committee in accomplishing the district business in a fair and efficient manner. Two, to maintain a good professional working relationship with the superintendent and the administration. Three, to assist the school committee in seeking and maintaining quality education for district students while husbanding resources with care. If it is your wish, I'm willing to serve as chair of the Wachusett School Committee for another year. If not, I will support the individual you may select at this time. And thank you all for your encouragement and support. Jackson, Mark Sapson, Duncan, John, Mike, Rob, Norman, Mike, Joe, Margaret,
Okay, I need to read these into the record. Uh, Robert Imber votes for Margaret Watson. Margaret Watson votes for Margaret Watson. <coughs> Duncan Leith votes for Margaret Watson. John Nunnery votes for Margaret Watson. Mike Pantos votes for Margaret Watson. Colleen Cipro votes for Margaret Watson. Melinda Coyle votes for Margaret Watson. Cynthia Bassinet votes for Margaret Watson. Stephen Hammond votes for Margaret Watson. Stacy Jackson votes for Margaret Watson. Norman Plourd votes for Margaret Watson. Joseph Sova votes for Margaret Watson. Robert Carter votes for Margaret Watson. Thomas Ackerman votes for Margaret Watson. Rob Pelzarski votes for Margaret Watson. Shirley Conrad votes for Margaret Watson. And Michael Sherman votes for Margaret Watson. Congratulations. Thank you for the confidence that you've shown. I will tell you this has been a very good committee to work with for the past two years. There is a lot of talent sitting around this table. And when we pool our efforts, we do a great deal of constructive work. So I look forward to another very good year working with you. Thank you. That we now have the task before us of uh, electing uh, a vice chair. Cynthia, nominations are open. If I were a sports fan, I'm certain that I would be able to come up with the perfect metaphor to describe John Nunnery's value to this committee. But alas, I am not a fan of sports. I am more a fan of Eugene O'Neill whose works, unfortunately, are unlikely to contain the metaphor I seek. So I have opted for a popular culture metaphor I suspect most around this table will appreciate. John Nunnery is the ever-ready bunny of the Wachusett Regional School <laughs> District Committee. <laughs> Prepared to go the distance each and every time, Mr. Nunnery has proved there simply isn't a task or a subcommittee too contentious or tedious for him. With a quinimus of plum, professorial patience and dispassionate analysis, Mr. Nunnery has unfailingly offered a guiding hand through some of this committee's most difficult times. As well, he has been the go-to guy for years when things needed to get done. As a result, he offers this committee a seasoned voice of reason and purpose, always acknowledging all sides of an issue and giving, giving every problem or question thoughtful consideration. <laughs> His wealth of historic knowledge, as well as his willingness to devote shocking amounts of time and energy to the needs of this committee, make him an excellent candidate to assist the leadership moving forward. I nominate John Nunnery for Vice Chair of the Wachusett Regional School District Committee. Second. Nomination made by Cynthia Bazinet, seconded by Duncan Lee. Yeah. Shirley Kyra. Oh, yes. of the vice chair is to exercise the powers and perform the duties uh, of the chair in the chair's absence. It's important to have a vice chair step in when necessary and run a fair and orderly meeting, um, as 
We all know Margaret has done an excellent job the past two years and set a very high standard. Um, Norm Floyd has been on the committee since 1992. He seldom misses regular, spe special, or subcommittee meetings. During that time, he's held positions on this committee. Uh, well, I'm not sure if he was the chair of this committee at any point, but I know when we were re uh, for high school, he was chair. Um, and he is very knowledgeable regarding the rules of order, which I Is there a second, please? Seconded by uh, Joe Silva. Thank you. Uh, are there further nominations? Would any of the candidates like to make a statement? Uh, Mr. Nunnery? First of all, Member Bassinet for the kind remarks. I'm very flattered. Uh, to the committee, um, I'm not much of a speech maker. I, don't, I probably won't do it here tonight, for sure. Um, I will uh, promise to uh, support the chairman uh, and uh, whatever the committee uh, uh, decides to do relative to any motion. I'll try to do the best that I can. Um, I thank everyone for the chance. I accept the nomination for the vice chairmanship of this committee. I am a long-standing member of this committee, representing Sterling for 14 years. I served as vice chairman once and twice as the chairman of the school committee. I have chaired the education subcommittee on three occasions, and I've been a member of the subcommittee every year of my tenure. I engaged in research and provided information to the full committee on the superintendent's search procedure as well as the evaluation of the superintendent, which was modified to its present form. I keep abreast of ongoing education changes, especially through MASC Info on the internet. MASC Info also provides daily school committee concerns across the Commonwealth and the goings on in the Department of Education. As a rule, this committee does rather well in its organizational skills and outcomes relative to other committees both local and regional. Such observations sharpen my monitoring of the Wachusett District. I understand the past, I work in the present, and I have concerns for the future. I have no personal agenda to bring to the table except to be prepared to do the right thing at the right time. I will be an advocate for greater state aid to education to relieve the pressure of the five communities. I am not alone in this regard. I will urge the school committee to become proactive to seek changes at the state level. The committee has engaged the help of our senators and representatives in the past with success. I believe that can be done again on a grander scale. I will have a proposal shortly. I am an advocate of a full day kindergarten in the district. The success of the pilot program in Princeton should encourage a district wide study of the possibility of providing such a program and service. I have been encouraged to pursue this endeavor by several constituents, both in and out of Sterling. I will have a proposal shortly. I tend to thrive in a leadership position, dating back especially to my experience in the Army while stationed at Fort Demons for 21 years. I introduced the color codes, especially the red sheets, for confidentiality. I will serve you well as the vice chair of this committee, as described in the bylaws. I am not presumptuous beyond that. I consider myself to be a member of a team of 20 players. I appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Would any member of the committee care to make additional statement? Are there any further nominations? The chair will Move entertain. Nominations be closed. Uh, moved by Duncan Leith to close nominations, seconded by Steve Hammond. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Any abstaining, you know. Uh, I have here the official ballots. Uh, they are... Uh, Hmm. 
Shirley Conrad votes for Norman Plord. Thomas Ackerman votes for John Nunnery. Robert Pilsarski votes for Norman Plord. Michael Sherman votes for John Nunnery. Stacy Jackson votes for Norman Plord. Norman Plord votes for Norman Plord. Robert Ember votes, votes for John Nunnery. Colleen <coughs> Cipro votes for John Nunnery. John Nunnery votes for John Nunnery. Duncan Leith votes for John Nunnery. Melinda Coyle votes for John Nunnery. <coughs> Cynthia Bazinet votes for John Nunnery. Stephen Hammond votes for John Nunnery. Michael Pantos votes for John Nunnery. Robert Carter votes for Norman Plord. Joseph Sova votes for Norman Plord. Margaret Watson votes for John Nunnery. Have you been keeping count? How much? Eleven for John Nunnery and six for Norman. John Nunnery is declared elected. <laughs> Michael Sherman moves to adjourn, seconded by Melinda Coyle. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed, nay. Any abstaining? The organizational meeting is adjourned. Yeah, don't go anywhere, folks. <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll, okay. we'll call to order regular meeting 1147. This being Tuesday, May the 27th, 2008. Uh, and we will have first the public hearing. I see that we have several speakers who have signed up. This evening, uh, I will read the guidelines for the public hearing. <clears throat> the Wachusett Regional School Committee welcomes community input through a public hearing session scheduled before all its regular meetings. Thoughtful and constructive public commentary is invaluable to the committee as it strives better to serve its schools and their students. To be fair to all, we ask that you follow these guidelines. First, please state your name and address. It would be helpful for you to state the purpose of your remarks. You may have the floor for up to three minutes. The public hearing is not a dialogue. It is an opportunity for you to welcome, for you to present your concerns and opinions to the Wachusett Regional School Committee. However, the chair may make a response at the conclusion of the speaker's comments or recognize the superintendent to do the same. Please direct your remarks to the business and policies of the committee as a whole. Do not address individual members or approach members of the committee. Public hearings are conducted in accordance with Robert's Rules of Order. Permission to speak is granted by the chair under the provisions of Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 39, Section 23C, which also establishes the chair's authority to maintain order. If a speaker must be called to order, the chair will issue a warning. If the warning goes unheeded, the speaker will be directed to withdraw. You are encouraged to hand the secretary a written transcript of your remarks which will be appended to the minutes of this meeting and become part of the public record. Within a few days, you will receive a letter from the chair of the committee or an official of the district telling you how your concerns will be addressed. 
thank you for your time and particip participation. At this time, we would like to welcome Ms. Ellen Chambers, who will speak to the topic special education. Right. Uh, good evening. My name is Ellen Chambers. My address is River Road in Pepperell, Massachusetts. I am here tonight to comment on Wachusett's recently released coordinated program review report. Uh, SpedWatch is an organization that I represent. We are a statewide organization, which is why I'm here, even though I live in Pepperell. Uh, we're a statewide nonprofit civil rights movement fighting to secure the educational rights of all Massachusetts students with disabilities. Um, as I said, I'm here tonight to comment on the recently re released coordinated program review report which shows widespread and egregious violations of students' special education rights in the district. The violations recorded in this report are not simply pesky little paperwork violations. They are substantive violations that are depriving Wachusett students with special needs of their legal and moral right to an appropriate education. The students with disabilities in Wachusett are set up for failure right from the beginning. According to the compliance report, which is issued by the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, Wachusett is not properly evaluating its preschool age children with special needs and is not preparing appropriate educational plans for them. So right from the tender age of three and four, these students are placed at very high risk for failure. At the other end of the spectrum, your older students with disabilities, those who are 16 through 21, are also being set up for failure. According to the report, again, uh, the district is not following the laws uh, which dictate the actions that school districts must take to transition students into the adult world of college and work. And what happens to students here in Wachusett in between those two, two times isn't really any better either. The district is providing special education services to its students with disabilities based on what the administration needs, not on what the student needs. The students are being educated in segregated and substandard locations. The district is not addressing the emotional, social, or behavioral needs of these children who have disabilities that give rise to that kind of difficulty in their development. The district is not properly tracking the student's progress. That means that a child could be failing and you would never know it. You would just continue to spend uh, dollars on services that are ineffective for that child and the child would slip right through the cracks. You are allowing paraprofessionals to take a central role in the education of these children without first properly training them for that significant responsibility. You're allowing administrators to override team decisions, and you're not meeting regulatory timelines with regard to evaluation. What that means is that students can wait for badly needed services far longer than is allowed by law. The human consequences of all of this are really nothing short of tragic. Students with disabilities in Wachusett are failing in huge numbers, far out of proportion to their intellectual ability. Many people believe that having a disability by definition means that a child cannot reach academic proficiency, but this is actually not true. Special ed law recognizes 13 different disability categories. Only three of them, intellectual impairment, multiple impairment, and developmental delay, only those three allow for the kind of significant cognitive impairment that would, may prevent a child from attaining academic proficiency. In Wachusett, only 7% of your students in grades 5 through 12, your students with disabilities I'm talking about, 7% of your students with disabilities in grades 5 through 12 have this type of impairment, which has a significant cognitive impairment component to it. That means that the rest of your students with disabilities 93% are as intellectually capable as their non-disabled peers of reaching academic proficiency. By definition, they don't have cognitive impairment. But on the MCAS exams, the achievement gap between your students with and without disabilities is enormous. 42 percentage points on average for the 2007 exams. And since 2003, that achievement gap has actually gotten worse over time. 
Now, I realize that you as a district are facing tremendous budgetary pressures. I get that. But the answer to that problem cannot be, cannot be to deny a child an education. It can't be, that cannot be the answer in this country. We are the wealthiest country in this nation. We have the resources we need to educate all of our children properly. What we haven't done is we haven't forced our government to allocate the resources that we need to do our job, and our children are paying too high a price for that inaction. What we're looking at here is educational neglect. It's a, ch it's a form of child abuse. When we talk about special education, we're not talking about Accusations are calling names. You know, you need to stick to the facts, please. These, okay. Most of that is the facts. It's all in the report. Yeah, and, and, and we, we need to get on with the business of the committee. So if Shall you I, could would please you like me to step down? finalize your remarks. Oh, sure. Um, when we talk about special education, we're not talking about a line item on a budget. We're talking about flesh and blood children who are counting on us to protect them. And so with that, I just urge you to take very immediate, decisive action to save these students from failure, not only in school, but in, in life. And my organization, SpedWatch, stands ready to offer you any support that you might like to, to have from us. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, we'd like to, <coughs> we'd like to welcome next uh, Sharon Cornoyer from Jefferson, Massachusetts, who is also here to speak to special education. Hi, my name is Sharon okay. Knoyer. I live at 315 Mason Road. The statement I make this evening represents the general consensus of a large group of parents of special needs children in our district. We present one voice in that the result of the 2008 Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education's coordinated program report for the Wachusett Regional School District is completely unacceptable and that the complacency of the school committee towards special education must come to an end. Partially implemented as defined by Mass Department of Elementary and Secondary Education means that the requirement in one or more, the requirement in one or several important aspects is not entirely met, or in layman's terms, it is defined as non-compliance. The Wachusett Regional School District was found to be in non-compliance in 51 different criteria areas, which means that the district is breaking 51 different special education laws and regulations. The CPR team audited the district in June of 2007. In November of that same year, the team forwarded a copy of their draft report to district administration for clarifications of issues they had encountered, such that there would be no inaccuracies in the final report. During this time, we parents of children with special needs waited. We waited for comment and concerns from our school committee on the status of the coordinated review process. None came. The CPR team forwarded the copy of their final report to district administration on April 8, 2008. Surely we thought our school committee would address the findings of the report in open meeting, and we eagerly awaited for those comments and concerns. None came. On April 23rd, the Mass Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education posted the CPR report on their website for public viewing. We read this report with great concern and outright anger as the report mirrored as this report is the mirror image of findings of the 2001 coordinated review, with some aspects such as inclusion actually getting worse. While six years time have passed and thus ample time to correct the areas of noncompliance, our district had done little to nothing. We thought that even though our district admi administration places special education low on their priority list, our school committee would share our concern and they would absolutely act. So we waited for your comments on these abysmal findings and none came. Our questions to you tonight is how much longer you'll make us wait? How much longer will the district ignore special education laws and regulations? 
How much longer will they write our children's individual education plans to fit the best interest of the district as opposed to the best interest of the child? How much longer will there be a sped wing at Thomas Prince Elementary School? How much longer will you contain our special education students in the windowless classroom of the high school basement? How much longer will you carbon copy our child's IEPs year after year? How much longer will our children's progress reports and IEPs contain completely con contradictory information? How much longer will you forbid the district, psychologists and therapists to include recommendations and bench benchmarks for progress in their reports? How much longer will our district count the heads of AIDS before telling us in IEP meetings that, sorry, inclusion just won't be appropriate for your child, when the reality is the district would rather banish our children to substantially separate classrooms than hire more AIDS to facilitate inclusion? How much longer are you going to not support the teachers in our district by providing them with highly trained paraprofessionals so they can actually facilitate inclusion? allowing our teachers to teach? How much longer will you allow district administration to overrule the findings of the IEP team by changing IEP language and not providing team chairs the authority to approve services as mandated by law? Heard enough? Thank you. And that the administration is uh, has examined this report and it, it, the comments are in the superintendent's report this evening and we can take these comments uh, up during that period of time. But there were quite a number of inaccuracies that were detected in this report and the administration is preparing a response to that report. Uh, and this response will be made available to the, to the school committee